The great Congress exodus seems to show no signs of ending. Leader after leader is quitting the party, in particular those who were once identified as Rahul Gandhi's associates, his friends, the young Turks of the party. I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo Story. It has got tough to count how many people are just leaving the Congress party. Jyotiraditya Sindhya, RPN Singh, both now with the BJP, followed by Jitin Prasad, who is also with the BJP. And the latest entrant, not to the BJP, but to the Shiv Sena, Ekna Shinde group that is in government with the BJP in Maharashtra, is making headlines. Now everybody is asking, what about Sachin Pilot? Is he the last man standing or could he too consider his options? And remember, Pilot has done that before. We'll be talking in a few moments from now to Milan Diora as we ask, what was the tipping point? Did the party even try and keep him back? We believe that the seat sharing talks was the problem or was the latest problem for Milan Diora, who was not happy with the number of seats that the Uddhav Thakre faction of the Shiv Sena was taking. But was there more to it? And will the Congress learn from this? Let's bring him up, our newsmaker on the broadcast this evening. Milan, thanks for your time. You've already spoken about how this was not an easy decision for you. Uh, let me start by asking you, what was the tipping point? I wouldn't say there was one tipping point, Barkha. Um, I've been, um, you know, sort of hoping against hope, if you will, that um, the party will find a way to change course on, on several issues, on, on its approach to politics, to opposing the government. And I, for one, in the last 10 years, I stayed loyal to the party. I didn't, I didn't leave after losing one election. I didn't sort of uh, feel that, you know, I've been defeated and that's the end of it. I worked hard to try to, um, I took Rahul Gandhiji to the US, uh, tried to get him to change, uh, to try to get uh, bring about a makeover in his image, try to move the party towards more constructive politics, um, less obstructive politics where it's simply opposing for the sake of opposing. Um, but I think it reached a stage, frankly, where I did not see that the party is willing to accept the ground realities in terms of how voters really believe, what, what they believe and what they, what they aspire for the party. And in many ways, Congress has been, we have, the, the party has been in touch culturally and economically with the aspirations of the people. But I wouldn't say it's a tipping point, but a few weeks ago, um, in, as part of these India Alliance conversations, there was, um, in Maharashtra, for instance, the Congress had a post-poll alliance with uh, the Shiv Sena UBT faction. And that was designed as a purely post-poll alliance very, very sudden, extremely un, uh, uh, unprecedented, and nobody would, nobody thought that it could ever happen. Um, it was initiated by the Shiv Sena UBT. I, I know what the Congress Party leadership thinks about the alliance, what they thought about it even then, and many of us knew that it could potentially harm the Congress because Shiv Sena UBT's plan is to become like a PMC or an Aam Aadmi Party of Maharashtra. But then before this Lok Sabha election, it was clear that we were moving into a pre-poll alliance. And when the discussion was to move to a pre-poll alliance, and a few weeks ago, uh, Sanjay Raut, who is uh, certainly an experienced politician, he went out and made a statement that Congress should start from zero seats, zero Lok Sabha seats in Maharashtra. And um, this caused a huge, uh, uh, I, I mean, you should use the word irritation in Congress's cadre across the state. Uh, workers, leaders felt, A, who is he to make that statement? B, who is Shiv Sena UBT to make the statement after what has happened to that party? That party is no longer the party it was in 2019 when MVA was formed. It's lost its MLAs, it's lost its MPs, it's lost its symbol, it's lost its name. And um, I was one of the only people who spoke out in favor of the party. But I've noticed that every time I had spoken out, brought out a constructive point, which was in the interest of the Congress party, whether it was that the alliance is harmful to the Congress in the long run, the fact that Sanjay Raut suggesting that Congress should start with zero seats is, um, uh, you know, 
um, detrimental for the prospects of the party, or if it's the fact that in 2014, after the Congress suffered its most devastating defeat and was brought down to 44 seats, and I demanded honest introspection, or in 2019, when Rahul Gandhi resigned from the post of president, and at that point, there was a debate going around in the public domain and private domain about who could potentially lead the party. And I made a public statement saying that somebody like a few of my younger colleagues, I named two younger colleagues, that they have every uh, uh, capability and ability to lead the party at a national you, you, level. You were talking about but, Sachin Pilot and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya. Right. And I said that they have, they have the hunger to lead the party and we should consider making one of them the party president. Each of these steps along the way in the last decade, which I believed would have been good for the party, introspection would have been good for the party after 2014, introspection after 2019 would have been good for the party, uh, having a stronger ability to put forth the Congress's viewpoint before Shiv Sena, UBT, that you are no longer a bigger party than the Congress, we should have an equal alliance. All of these were seen rather than seen as constructive suggestions in the interest of the party, they were often seen as revolt. And many a times I've been, I've seen that a constructive suggestion led to being sidelined for a long time. And, I, and I'm, I'm not talking about weeks or months, sometimes even years. Um, and that, that kind of toxic environment at some stage is what just led me to say, fine, you want to continue doing this kind of politics, you want your head to be buried under the sand, go ahead. I don't want to do this. I want to be constructive. In the last 10 years, I stayed loyal to the party. I could have left the party a long time ago. There are critics who will say that the party has given me so much. It has. It's given my family a lot. But my family has given a lot to the party as well. We've sacrificed our lives for the party as well. My late father and I helped build the party. We helped sustain the party. We kept the party together in Mumbai. We helped strengthen the party in Maharashtra. We helped connect the party to soft powers that it had no connection with. So it's unfair to think of it as a one-way street, as one-way traffic. It's two-way traffic. This is not a family enterprise or a private limited company that people are employees, paid employees. People work as activists to strengthen the party. Party gives people power. It empowers them to serve the people, to strengthen the party, and people give back. But I, unfortunately, there is, a, there is a culture where constructive suggestions are seen as revolt. Um, you know, the, to me, I would say, uh, uh, not a tipping point, but after I had taken my decision, a senior leader of the party sent me a message that, you know, couldn't you have gone on another day? Because, because of Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra being on the same day. When that happened, when I heard, when I saw that message, I, it actually reinforced and reaffirmed my decision that when, when a senior leader of any organization, a senior member of any organization, a political organization, a private organization is leaving or is reaching out to the party, is trying to put forth a suggestion that is in the interest of the party. The party, that organization, the leadership of that organization should be reaching out to that person saying, what is your concern? Is your How did they respond? Interest? How did they respond? Other than asking you to the delay your was, The response was, can you change your date? So it just it just goes to show what Congress has become. And that's why I put out in my, I said in my statement that, and by the way, this date had nothing to do with the Yatra. The date was because it's on the eve of Makar Sankranti, which is an auspicious day in Maharashtra. It's a very auspicious day for people like me who are Maharashtrans. And who live in Mumbai, it's an extremely auspicious date. It had nothing to do with the Yatra. But the fact that the party has, in that sense, that's why I said that it's not the party that I joined in 2004. It's not the party my late father joined in 68. The stories I heard, the experiences I had in 2004 were about getting things done by reaching across the aisle, working with the government, working with the opposition, doing something good for the city, the betterment of Mumbai, doing something good for the betterment of India. I understand that political culture in India and around the world has become very um, divided and very extreme and very polarized. And you either like someone or you hate someone. I understand that's the nature of politics today. But I still hoped against hope. And I would always say this within my in internal forums, that the Congress should lead the way in bringing back constructive centrist politics to India. 
when I saw that there's no hope of that, that's when I unfortunately had to take this decision. You're saying and the Congress, uh, the, are you saying the Congress lurched leftwards? No, I mean, look, uh, the Congress has certainly uh, moved away from its core values. And um, that is something which I, I mean, it's not for me to say that people can reject and, um, uh, you know, and criticize me for saying this. But ultimately, the voters have decided. And, you know, the, the party, I saw election after election, you know, we would blame sometimes the media for the defeat. Sometimes we would blame EVMs for the defeat. Sometimes the party would blame someone else for the defeat. Sometimes the party would say North India is responsible for the defeat. I mean, what have we, what, what has the Congress, a party with a great legacy been reduced to? Where you're coming to a stage where you're, you're willing to say now that the voters of India are wrong, but we are failing, the party is failing to introspect. So, it, can, I, can, it, I, can I ask you, can I, can I ask you, it's you it's an, it's an emotional decision for me. I, it was not an easy decision. I was, I always believed I would be the last man standing. Um, and if, if I had to end a 55 year relationship, family relationship with this party, not for the pursuit of power, I stayed in this party for during its 10 most challenging years without any power. I can sustain being in politics without any power, even for another 20 years. I don't need power to sustain myself. I don't need a, a home in Delhi or something like that. I can sustain without that. For me to have taken this decision, I can tell you, it reached a stage where I lost hope. And I was often told by people that you're hoping against hope. There's no reason for you to be hopeful, but I still did that. But it came to a point where I just said, I don't see it willing to, wanting to improve or wanting to change. Okay, I, I know we have only a couple of minutes more with you. Just a last question. Uh, you accompanied Rahul Gandhi on a number of his trips outside of India. You were known to have at one point a pretty decent relationship with him. Did he respond to your concerns? Uh, did he reply? Did the family try and reach out? You've already made it clear that a top leader asked you to delay uh, your, your, your decision, your announcement, and that's all that they cared about. What about the family themselves? And an accompanying question is, Congress leaders are today putting out that the reason you quit is because you were not getting your South Mumbai seat, and that was the tipping point. If you want to respond to both of these. Well, firstly, what happened internally between me and the party now, it's I don't. there's no point talking about that. I've moved on. Um, I don't have any ill feelings towards anyone. I wish them all the very best. Um, you know, this debate about did someone move on for power? Firstly, there's nothing wrong in that. If tomorrow someone has moved on to be able to serve the people better, if there's someone else who's empowering your hands, strengthening your hands to be able to serve your constituents, to be able to fulfill your purpose, what is wrong in that? My ideology, my purpose is very, very clear. My ideology has always been constructive politics, betterment of Mumbai, Maharashtra and India. My politics has never, has never been critical of someone at a personal level. It's never been hitting somebody below the belt. It's been critical of policies. It's never been critical of a person. So I, I, these are the values I believe in. And regardless of which party I'm in, these are the values I will always stand by and stand for. So it's fine to say that Congress has to say something. I have to say something. There's no point debating it endlessly. I've moved on. I wish them well. I think that if the party decided to improve, at the very least, India would get a constructive opposition. And I'm sure that people now on the side I'm on, as part of the NDA, the Mahayuti, would want a constructive opposition. How will you remain true to your core values? How will you remain true to your core values after a 55-year-old association with one party moving to the other side core, of the aisle? My core, values, my core values are to serve the people I have represented, to serve the people of Mumbai, to improve the better, to, to for, work for the betterment of Mumbai, to work for the betterment of Maharashtra, to work for the betterment of India. And I have, a, I have ideas, I have a vision. India is changing. Young people have different outlook and a different outlook on politics. We're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about new technologies. The entire world is changing. We have to, to work to give a voice to people who have cultural, economic, political aspirations. And that is, has always been the root cause of my, the root, the basis of my politics. So that will not change for me. And when I met Eknath Shindeji, who's the chief minister of Maharashtra, the first thing he told me was, I face daily attacks. I faced daily attacks that Shiv Sena came with me and the party I left or the party I recreated 
and the family that i left cannot accept the fact that the party has come with me and he said just put your head down work constructively don't get into criticism and counter criticism i need someone like you for the betterment of mumbai and maharashtra and that's what i want to do so those are the core values i represent those are the core values which will stay with me in this party as well all right milind we wish you good luck thank you for talking to us and take care thank you Thank you. Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is, and as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as as the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word, and thank you for your support.